All right, let's jump into it. We've got some gaming happening here. Jeskai Control versus Cascade Crash. Cascade Crashing Footfalls. It's a Cascade deck. Um, I don't know a better way to, to describe it. It's not like the traditional uh, Crashing Footfalls deck. It, I mean, it is and it isn't. It's got some new tools in it and some new stuff, so we're going to talk a little bit about it and show you guys some cool, exciting stuff in this match here. But we're starting things out. You can uh, hear a little bit in the background as the uh, other players in the shop are, you know, yelling and getting hyped up about rolling. This is from a few weeks ago. This was came out before Dustmorn uh, was released. So there are some new cards that players have been testing out, like Fear of Missing Out and things like that. This uh, deck is not running those. But, you know, th keep that in mind for the extra attack combats and stuff like that but you you get to see at least the shell the basis for the deck here that kind of is still getting worked on still uh seeing some updates and innovation to it which is very cool like I, a lot of people thought that you know the crashing footfall style deck would just die out um after they had all that fun stuff uh happen with the bannings but you know like this was about a year ago but now we're getting into like people are finding out new ways to be able to do things and here's one of it blood braid marauder is one of the new tools that people are experimenting with uh by being able to have a creature that's got the ability to have cascade the longer the game goes on so really kind of helps you build up into stuff and this list is kind of have like a little bit of death by a thousand cuts with some amulet, uh, unstable amulet uh, built into it, which we'll get into uh, when that shows up. But for now, it's just sort of land go. The Jeskai Control uh, deck, you guys know I've been playing this. This is, I want to say, the first week that I had picked up the deck and started playing it. Uh, so there might be a few mistakes, a little bit of sloppiness here and there between the players. If you notice something, you know, let us know. Point it out, leave comments, tips and tricks and stuff like that. Uh, it's always tough the first time you pick up a new deck or start playing a deck that you might not have played in a while to kind of get used to the you know nuances that come with mulliganing, with, that come with sideboarding, uh, just like even just lines of play. Like once you start getting the grind on with specific decks, you really start to notice, oh, these are the optimal lines. This is what I should be hoping for or trying to kind of produce and set up for as much as possible. E even within like other formats, not just uh, w within modern, right? If you're playing commander or standard or pioneer, even like there's, there's many formats out there that if you play your deck more consistently, you're going to run into kind of similar s s like lines that you'll notice from the way that you play. Yeah. It's a lot of land go. Let's see. Swinging in five damage coming across which will be met with a galvanic discharge so we can pay any amount of energy we've talked about this before uh you basically say hey i'd like to cast this targeting this uh do you have a response if your opponent does not then you can pay the amount of energy they're not able to respond after you pay the energy so they've basically said the spell has resolved i keep bringing it up because it is a little nuance see within the card that if you're not as familiar or haven't been fighting against certain energy cards or playing them you might have missed it but here's another big reason why players are trying out this version of cascade uh, the phoenix list we've seen it before with like a hollow one build previously on the channel and now we're going to be seeing another way that you could be able to use this detective's phoenix all right building up our energy count here and we're just sort of continuing on our just guys side of things of uh delay 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 as much as possible and hopefully get some more answers to it now the risk of finding specific answers is the phoenix does have that bestow ability that you can be able to get rid of you know you collect evidence six so you pay the bestow cost of one red and then you're able to exile uh cards with mana value six or greater from your graveyard to be able to just attach that phoenix onto another creature giving that creature plus two plus two flying in haste which can be really scary when you're attaching that onto a rhino from the crashing footfalls so we'll see if that does come up in this matchup here but got a lot of cool exciting stuff in this with here's flage the big top end game ender that chess guy control is trying to hope for and we'll get the phoenix out of the way which you know is eh deal with it for now right delay it for now we haven't 
put too much stuff in the graveyard on the cascade side so we can kind of hope for the best here like lands don't really help us with the collecting evidence all right but I think they're building up to a much higher count to be able to start using their Cascade ability off of their Blood Braid Marauder. So we'll see. There's two mana, and here's a Blood Braid Marauder. So we're going to get some Cascading going, unless there's a response. Nope, there's not. So we're looking for something, of course, that costs one or less. And there is something in the deck that does cost less, and we're looking for it right there with the Crashing Footfalls, creating two, four, four green rhino creature tokens with trample so now the board state gets really crazy like you look at that like advantage meter on this side it's definitely on the side of our uh, cascade player we don't have the way to collect the evidence yet to give anything haste but we can at least poke in deal two damage and then we kind of set up for a scary turn to follow it up Yes, there is a flage there, but that's not really what we're worried about. There's not, I mean, what, there's four things in the graveyard, essentially five, but we're less worried about the flage here because we still have all the, the rhinos. But Party Thrasher is going to be coming out. He's a lizard wizard. It's got a 1-4 non-creature spells cast from exile, have convoke, so you can be able to do some shenanigans with that. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you can discard a card, exile top two cards from your library, choose one of those, and you get to play it this turn. That play does uh, matter, right? The difference between playing and casting. You're allowed to play lands from that side where you, you know, because you're not casting lands. So wording is very important when it comes to cards like this. All right, so there one, two, three, four, five. There's at least five cards to escape with. With the um, flage, you could be able to kill off one thing. So there is that option for that. Really, you're hoping for a board wipe, and looks like we've got a Wrath of Skies and a Supreme Verdict in hand there. So we're, we'll at least be able to put a stop to this big development here. And there it is. There's the Supreme Verdict. So nice little wipe. Clear that off. But that means that it'll become much easier for the collect evidence. So if the game continues to go long like this, there is that kind of threat uh, to be aware of but here's the difference we can see a glance through in that regard of of the cards uh this cascade player is rocking out with some blood moons main board part of that is uh you know blood moons a good card and also just the decks that are running around our shop right now uh, we're having a lot of amulet titan having a lot of kind of big mana decks so it's like yeah some blood moons can go a long way in in shaping your your wins there all right, Blood Blade Marauder, we're looking for another Cascade into a Crashing Footfalls here. Big Cascade. There it is. So, yeah, this is a little bit more streamlined, if you will, of the color choices. It's basically just pure red-green. Some versions of the Cascade-style decks are running, like, the four colors or even all five colors and going for, like, a domain Cascade. This is just pure Cascade into Crashing Footfalls. But, yeah, we basically get to reset up here and go for a nice little big build-up. Are we doing the Bestowin? Looks like we might be. Here's our graveyard. Yeah, starting to... Uh, ship away these cards we would like to attempt to bestow we've collected evidence six and we're going to attach this onto this rhino which will be met with a response of at least killing the rhino off so the way it works is you know just like any other bestow creature if that creature would die the enchantment falls off and becomes a creature itself so there's at least a little pokey of two damage. Now, we did see the Wrath of Skies that was still in the hand, so we know that there is at least a follow-up way to kind of reset and wipe the board. And really, we needed kind of both to kind of deal with the pressure that is on the Cascade side. If you if we did not have both, we would be essentially dying. <laughs> All right, there's the Wrath of Skies. So we could pay into it. Uh, really, you just need at least three energy um, to be able to kill everything. And that is the case. We do pay three into it. Not a lot of cards left, but we're going to be able to 
put our threat out now, do a little bit of helixing. Uh, of course, that lightning helix effect, deal three damage, gain three life. Kind of help reset things a little bit there. We do a little bit of swapping of the life totals. There we go. Cash grab. This is a cool card. Uh, think Malevolent Rumble, um, but you don't get an Eldrazi spawn. So just kind of like redundancies within the effects. A lot of players are running uh, four of Cash Grab, four of Malevolent Rumbles now. Uh, so that is kind of a nice little way. It does care about squirrels, but that is irrelevant lines of text about creating food tokens. We don't really care about it. We really care about the permanent that we're going to get. And so now it's like you're looking at it and you go, well, if Blood Moon would have been good if I had gotten that earlier we don't so we'll take our unstable amulet here there's also the debate maybe about uh grabbing the amp raptor and hoping to get something off of it but it's like i feel like the death of a thousand cuts is going to be more beneficial with unstable so yeah that of course will be taking place in the end snap and now we can kind of help us build up here there's the unstable. Let's get some more energy. And then we, of course, can be able to pay two into it to exile something, which is a phoenix. Not bad. Of course, casting that will cause a damage. Yeah, we'll get our Chigantha into hand there because we do rock the uh, companion. Move to combat. Let's do a big swing here. Essentially nine points of damage, right? Helix face also takes six. And that's the very aggressive power, a very strong uh, use of flage there, being able to kind of push in for damage. All right, we've got, of course, our Gigantha. We've got another amulet, our unstable amulet in hand. I guess you go the Gigantha and, and hope for the best here. Like, I don't know. I don't know. That seems like a, a risk, right? You do have the Phoenix, though, so you could go for the Gigantha Bestow. All right. Amulet coming out. Let's get all the information. So get two more energy. We can be able to cast our phoenix if we want but let's get all the information so the first one goes with this oh another amulet okay well that's going to set us up a lot but it, will it be enough to keep us alive i don't think so we have to yeah we have to basically we're going through the motions here to show a little bit more of what the deck is doing um and here's a land let's play this land All right, so we do, basically we chained our amulets together. There is a little bit of life that gets uh, lost, and now anything else that gets cast from anywhere other than the hand is going to be able to tread for three. So I like this idea of, of setting yourselves up with these unstable amulets to, to kind of go that route, and why you can kind of, by shifting away from the you know, other, like the four or five color versions of Cascade to the kind of red-green version like this and relying on Bloodblade Marauder as your main Cascade effect, you can run two drops, right? Where you can't run two drops in the other version because, like, you're, you're Cascading off a of three costs. And so it's like anything that costs, you know, less than that is going to get cast so in this case you do get a little bit more flexibility on what you can run now we attempt to play something but it's immediately hit with a counter spell and that's going to wrap it up for game one giving the just guy control player just sort of the hey supreme verdict hey wrath of skies let's just kind of reset and now we're going to go into sideboard action here for game number two we get a little glimpse of what is to come and we see those of course already grabbing some of those uh, mage, bane, lizards. But yeah, lots of cards coming in for both players here as we go into game number two. 
what do you guys think of the Cascade deck? I've played a couple different Rhino lists. It's, I I get bored with the list a lot. Like they're cool, but it's a lot of just like, hey, can I Cascade into this? Do you have an answer for this? Yes. Okay. I'll I'll try to delay and try to piece something together. Or no, you don't. All right. I'm just gonna swing with my two two or my two four four rhinos with trample and put a big clock on you that way i don't know this coming of course from the infect player that's just like either you got it or you don't <laughs> but there's i feel like there's a little bit more nuances and wizard battles that take place within infect of like trying to protect and keep creatures alive you trying to kill them where it's doesn't feel the same with the cascade but Maybe, I, you know, not every deck is for every player, right? You've got to find the play style that you enjoy, whether it's Commander, Pioneer, Legacy, Modern, Standard, whatever whatever format of Magic you're playing. Now, I will say, for those that are still watching right now, I didn't get to mention this earlier. We have a big special video coming out on Saturday this week. Uh, not every Saturday do we get to have videos, but this Saturday we're going to have three, or this week we're going to have three videos. So, of course... Monday, Thursday, and then on Saturday we have a special video that we'll be showing off uh, an interview we did with MTG Nerd Girl, who of course helped to create uh, the uh, channel uh, decked out, the Commander Show, stuff like that. So, you know, very very awesome content creator in the scene. So, if you want to learn a little bit more about them and and their uh, content creation journey and and what. Uh, they have prioritized and and what they focus on when they create content that might be one you might want to check out all right let's see big swingy of turns here now you see that there's an amp raptor with our unstable there's going to be some uh, shenanigans coming up that we're going to talk about but again there sometimes players make sloppy mistakes Sometimes, you know, it's a learning process. Again, it's uh, after a day of work. A lot of us coming in, some are tired. I especially am coming in after spending all day teaching. I'm like, some days I'm in it. My brain is firing on all cylinders. And some days my brain is like, I don't even know what you just said to me right now. <laughs> but we're just going with the surveillance setup here. So here is the Amped Raptor coming. Now, of course, we'll do the Death of a Thousand Cuts. We will get some energy, but here's our cheating step. Amperaptor does not get to do his cascade effects if you cast it from anywhere else. It only does that if you cast it from your hand. The fact that we're casting it off of Unstable means that we do not get access to this Blood Braid Marauder here. So a little bit of a cheating step here. Which, again, would cause less damage to be there and less threats to be on the board. Yes, you could be able to cast the Amp Raptor, and it's probably good just to build up your energy count. And just to have a 2-1 with First Strike is, is not a bad thing, right? But this Cascade effect wouldn't have gone off. This, this Amp Raptor effect would not have gone off. But, you know, that's kind of the... This was a couple of weeks ago. My brain was not firing all cylinders to check and make sure. Oh wait, it's only from hand. It's not from every time it cast it because that they they designed it that way so you could not amp raptor into amp raptor, right? That was the biggest thing they they wanted to make sure that you could not do when they were designing the card. And uh, we, you know, sometimes sometimes that happens. But let's see if that is going to be um, making a difference in this game in this matchup. Ooh, another unstable amulet. It's pretty good. We need a Wrath of Skies here to really just kind of blow all of this up. A land, which of course gets played, does not end up taking any damage off that because you're just playing it. You're not, you know, of course, casting it. You only take damage if you're casting spells. Ooh, we can see some of those lizards hanging out up there. All right, stomping grounds coming out here. We'll lose a bit of life. All right. Big swings. Let's blow one of them up. Galvanic Discharge going to at least get rid of the 3-1. 
we'll take two. Again, that wouldn't have made too much difference other than I guess we would have bolted that amp raptor. I don't know. It's get, It gets weird, right? With like, you know, when, when players make mistakes. But that's why we're doing this to also see these mistakes that happen and identify it so it won't happen again for other players that might fight against amp raptor, right? All right, Mystic Gate. It's getting access to all of our colors that we need, filtering through, and let's prismatic ending. Yeah, we could go for the Amp Raptor, but I feel like getting rid of one of those Death of a Thousand Cuts effect is probably better here. All right, Cash Grab again. Let's do some Millen four cards and pick a permanent to add to our hand here. So uh, things are looking pretty scary with all of that. I mean... It, Unlicensed Hearse makes a lot of sense to help make sure Flades doesn't come out. Uh, Amp Raptor, if you're looking to try to close out the game a little bit more. The Party Thrasher being a 1-4 is nice. You know, I, I, I'm i less interested in the Party Thrasher personally. I lean more towards the Amp Raptor and the Unlicensed Hearse here. But again, I'm not, a, I'm not a Cascade player. And there might be that logic of, oh, well, if your hand's crappy, the Party Thrasher makes more sense to be able to use the discarding and, and set yourself up better. Also, the fact that it's a 1-4 does matter. Uh, but we are going to start out, looks like, yep, the Cascading, Blood Braid Marauder, which will, of course, consign the Cascade trigger here. Slow down a bit. All right, Rumble time. Malevolent Rumble, let's do the four, and this time we get an Eldrazi spawn. Probably the amulet. Yeah, let's grab that unstable amulet. There's the spawn. Swinging in for two. Just chipping away. Be nice if we get like a one ring or something like that to kind of help delay and stall things out. Um, we do have, because, uh, like, the unlicensed hearse is, is not there anymore we didn't take it so this kind of gives us the coast is clear for flage to come in we'll do a little three three swap in here deal damage to that gain some life and try to delay tactics and and hoping like no cascade brings out the uh, the crashing footfalls or something that close the game faster All right, another unstable. Let's get some energy. Let's, oh, an Amp Raptor. Are we ready for another cheating step? Because it's going to happen. Here's an Amp Raptor. We'll get some energy. Of course, that will shred for two uh, because there's casting it from somewhere else. And here is a Mage Bane Lizard, which would have been drawn next turn. Um, so it doesn't make too much of a difference in it. But again, that, that extra life loss is relevant and getting that out now is relevant so this is a anti uh storm card or anti like incident sorcery deck right non-creature spells this deals damage to that player equal to the number of non-creature spells cast this turn uh so that's for both players of course but it really is hey you want to try to storm off storm off through this where you're just being shredded one little bit at a time All right, surveilling, all right, whatever it is, we're happy to keep there. Of course, we've got our Flage in the graveyard, so we could do some Zap in here, try to set ourselves up. Problem is that Mage Bane is also sitting with uh, four toughness, so we can't really, like, Zap him right away. But this will help a little bit. Supreme Verdict will wipe the board. We'll go down to eight. And just sort of, again, we're on delay tactics. So we've, we've taken a bit more shredding damage than we should have here. But for the most part, it's been pretty similar to game one of like, all right, our Cascade player is trying to build up a big board and the control player is trying to stop it. Another Mage Bane Lizard is going to be really tough to fight through here. 
And there's our Party Thrasher, a 1-4. Of course, you can cast stuff from Exile with using Convoke. Um, and then it's got the discard a card, exile top two cards from your library, choose one of them, and you can play it this turn, which works out really well with your unstable, all right? Because you get to start being like, oh, I'll discard this card I don't need, exile this, maybe I can play it this turn, sweet, and if I do, it's going to shred you for two damage every time I'm casting something. All right, we do island cycling, just let's thin out the deck a little bit, get ourselves prepared, because... You know, losing a life to draw three cards is not going to help us to win. So we kind of set ourselves up here. Yeah, now we're in the flage here. Yep, there's the play flage. Exile some cards. They both have four toughness, so shooting them doesn't matter unless we had, like, a galvanic discharge or something so we do a kind of a life swap again go to 11 opponents at 10 and hope that we can untap and swing with this all right that's kind of where we're at now it is very tough 11 is very low life when every spell is going to be dealing two damage to us is going to be a problem so we're going to discard a card here's two cards Ooh, a phoenix and a giant bone crusher giant that's really nice Damage can't be prevented. You could deal two damage. The Phoenix is really good because you get to give something flying. We're going to go with the Phoenix here, especially if we're going to be getting a Cascade effect, which you looked, we did draw a Blood Blade Marauder. Bam, bam, bam. We have Delirium, and we will be able to start Cascading here. Unless there's a Consigned to Memory or something along those lines to stop it. But we know that there is not. And right off the rip, let's do this. Of course, that will shred for two. And, of course, our own damage will be taken for that because it is for both players with our little lizard wizard over there. Now, I guess this one's just a lizard. He hates wizards, though. The mage bane. All right, here is our rhinos. 4-4 four, four, trample beast. And we will be able to do some bestowing here. So we're going to do some convoking uh, to help us cast this. Are going to get rid of those six cards, collecting that evidence, attaching it onto here. Two more damage shredding. And now we can be able to swing for six. So yeah, at 11 life, we're taking quite a bit this turn. Um, I guess you just alpha swing here, right? And win. But just play it safe and swing with the six and, and hold everybody back here. All right, here's the attack. Swinging in for six. And there is a burn spell in hand. So no blocks. Go to damage. Drop to one. And I say, is there, do you have a burn spell? And yep, here's my bone crush. And I was like, oh, sweet. All right, let's go to game three. So a little bit of cheating steps in game number two that kind of made things weird. Um... It, it just adjusted the life total, so maybe the Flage could have stabilized a little bit more based on how things were going, because there would have been less threats out. Who knows? Who knows? But let's jump into game number three for anyone that's still sticking with us and watching this epic adventure of Jeskai Control versus Cascade Crash. All right. So, we also run into the... Uh, lovely little issue of going, yes, great, I gotta go first. Oh, just kidding, here's a uh, gemstone cavern, so it's like I'm going second now. Great, great. The biggest thing here, especially in modern, is that, like, advantage you get of 
being the one to lead the momentum, especially as a control deck that you want to be able to be set up ready to respond to what your opponent's big stuff is. Uh, going second, you are basically on the back foot there because you're behind mana and have to, they're allowed to uh, essentially sneak in stuff a little bit more uh, by being able to go first. And that's one of those really scary stuff. Unlicensed Hearse coming out here. Uh, this is one of those sideboard tech pieces that is set up to stop your opponent from utilizing their graveyard for Flage. All right, we know Flage is the big end-all win con, so having having that, it will just, like, build up quickly, and it could become a threat, right? As you continue to put counters on it later on, it doesn't take that much to crew it. Like, it's it's pretty scary. All right, there is a one ring, there is a flage, so we have some stuff. We're gonna just keep eating. So the flage is basically a dead card in hand at the moment. Hey, let's suspend a crashing footballs. Never where you want that to be, but keeps like a continual threat out there. Tune the narrative is gonna get used, but we play it smart and in response, uh, we will go and find our surveil land. Uh, that was one of the things that, because it, I was picking this deck up for the first time, or maybe it was the second time playing it that night, uh, I was making little mistakes like that of like, I'm not as used to the lines and the cards. We talked about this earlier. And one of which is you have a, an instant speed draw effect. You should use your surveil land first, find out if this is something you even want to draw and then draw that card. All right, Scolding Tarn. Just sort of land go. Kind of from both players, but again, our Cascade Crash player is set up much better here. They have the Unlicensed Hearst out. They've got the, of course, Crashing Footfalls slowly ticking down. That's basically just a ticking time bomb for us. So it's kind of trying to assemble and piece together something quick enough. But... Our graveyard being eaten alive is, is going to make this very difficult. Hey, there's another one. Let's just kind of keep, keep the train rolling. And a Malevolent Rumble. So it's a big setup turn here. Uh, what's nice is the... Hey, we don't have to worry so much about um, an effect you know, really getting us yet. There's no threats out. It's just a lot of setup here. One thing that I'm always aware of is Malevolent Rumble is a setup card. I don't, it, unless your opponent really cares about their graveyard, you, sh you shouldn't worry about countering Malevolent Rumble. It's more of counter what they get next. There is, of course, some exceptions to that. If the players playing a graveyard based deck and they actually like oh i want all this in the graveyard because i'm going to use my agatha sold cauldron or stuff like that to, to set myself up which then that makes more sense but we'll surveil a land into the graveyard there and be ready to go turn four at least have a one ring available to us looks like a wrath of skies as well so the goal would be to try to delay as long as possible and hopefully save the Wrath of Skies for when the Crashing Footfalls has resolved. But this will be at least a way to kind of let set ourselves up here. Draw some cards, protected for a little bit. All right, let's eat it. Eat more things. Again, nothing to crew it to kind of take us out yet but it's it's scary i think it's two that you have to crew it for yeah crew two and it's power and toughness um is equal to the number of cards exiled with it all right cascading 
They could cast it, just use all the energy, and that's going to be the case. So now we're starting to build up a pretty scary board state. We can start crewing. Not that it matters now, but hey, we'll move to combat, swing with the Phoenix. Not that it actually does anything, but it's more of that send a message that we always like to joke about at our local. All right, taking some damage off the one ring. It's really just kind of get as much information as possible. So activate the one ring again, most likely. Draw two more cards and really set up for a, probably a board wipe here. Kind of reset everything. Wrath of Skies would be really nice to get rid of the unlicensed Hurst. Because that is going to be a problem the longer it stays out. Again, we're behind where we want to be on that curve, right? Because if we had gone first and our opponent didn't have the gemstone caverns, you, we could be feeling a little bit more comfortable of being able to, okay, let's Wrath of Skies while having our uh, backup with like Counterspell or things like that. So it's like this weird, weird window of trying to decide what to do. So... Yeah, we should be activating the one ring here, but Wrath of Skies is perfectly fine to do first. I it's I don't know. We're we're going to get one extra energy so we can be able to pay the other energy we got from two in the narrative, so a total of three to be able to wipe everything in response. Let's eat the stuff in the graveyard, which is fine. Opponent has two cards in hand, so doing this is uh solid just to kinda hey, slow down, stop what you're doing, let's put a, a delay on what your plan is especially because you're on like plan b of the cascade deck where you're ticking down your uh crashing footfalls here didn't activate the one ring again but that's okay all right blood braid and water now we can do it to kind of see if we can draw a counter spell or response to it um so that will of course get our cascade and we'll start Looking at our top cards, looking for another crashing footfalls, which is probably going to be um, a while before we get to it because we've already have two on the field. There's another one there, and again, uh, mistakes are made. Subtlety. I made the mistake because again, I have not been playing this deck, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do this. Let's bounce this. Let's pitch this." Because I, in my brain, I'm thinking of subtlety. You see my like response there. Oh, subtlety should be reacting to. Any spell. No, it's only creatures and planeswalkers. So it's like, hey, you could do it with this Marauder. And it's like, no, that would just be bad for me. I can't do that. I'm pitching. I'm basically pitching two cards for free. And here's a counter spell because I'm making mistakes. And this is here to die. Uh, no, we're not going to get rid of your Marauder and put that back on top for you to just do it again. Uh, so that will just die for the price of for free. And I've just kind of wasted three cards. N wasted three cards not quite wasted two cards for sure um you know mistakes mistakes but uh, like we said you're supposed to make mistakes when you're learning new decks be aware of them notice them actually take a minute and process what happened or at least after the game might be hard in the moment especially you're if you're in it all right but i always take that time to process it afterward or if i'm playing the next game with the same deck like hey you made this mistake with this specific card don't do that again pay close attention to what the cards are and what's happening and and understand how certain cards interact with each other all right drawing three this one ring putting in work though all right unlicensed hearse will start eating things but it's not as scary yet No other one ring to replace, but we do have a Teferi, which is nice. We can sit here and bounce or just uptick. Really, the bounce is probably the best line here. I don't know. Upticking could be good of being able to cast something uh, at instant speed, like a Wrath of Skies or stuff like that. But getting rid of the unlicensed hearse to potentially counter that is also uh, more beneficial uh and this is the nice little reaction of hey you would like to cast this from exile you may not you may not cast things other than at sorcery speed now so your cascading is unable to work so you are not able to do the things that you want to do with removing that last tr uh, counter on your suspended card so if this stayed out like if we upticked it 
yes, we could take some damage. The unlicensed hearse could do two, or the or this could do three to us. But the real thing is, we're gonna try to react and and fight over things a little bit more. So that'll hit. Now we can start doing the amped raptor here, which will get met with a counter spell, specifically a spell snare to fight over this. And we're in this because we're drawing so many cards. We're now in the the advantage meter has swung back over to the control player side. Unlicensed Hearse is going to come, which will be met with a consigned memory, countering that colorless spell. So now it's just like boom, boom, boom. Two big, quick denials of the Cascade player trying to reestablish themselves. Now there is the Crashing Footfalls about to go off next turn, so that does kind of make things a little bit, uh, you know, awkward or rough that we have to kind of keep in mind that this will be happening. All right, surveilling. Keeping it on top, whatever it is. All right, losing three life. So this is also in that uh, section here where it's like, okay. Wow, drawing four cards. This is one of those games that you see the one ring just putting in so much work. All right, here's a filter land. Mystic gate to filter through. Lots of cards in hand here. So if the rhinos come out, we can kill them off. Uh, hoping for another one ring, though, or something to kind of do a reset here because we're taking so much damage. So that will be the case. Lots of cards in hand. Yeah, pass and turn, though. Keeping the Flage back. Three mana up. We'll hit that counter spell on the Crashing Footfalls and fight over it that way. All right. Get the Gigantha into hand. So now there's that follow-up for next turn. All right, lots of cards. Still sitting there with seven. Yeah, seven cards in hand. Maybe there was an eight in hand before. I don't know. I'm missing. Uh, again, mistakes were made a lot in this game. But it's, it's a very important one for players learning both of these decks. All right, there's the Flage. We can zap this and do a quick life reset there of jumping up to 13, but we're going to respond with a little surveil land fetching this up to try to set ourselves up and get more information for next turn. We're in a very awkward spot as the Cascade player trying to, to prepare to deal with this flayed because once it came down, right, it makes all the difference in, in kind of closing out the game. It's the game ender that the just guy control players is, is hoping to land. And we'll be able to do some fetch in here to get our last red source, because we do, of course, have one red source already on the board. We'll need one more. Go find ourselves. Do we get the shock or the basic here? It looks like the basic we're fine with. So we'll get the basic and be able to do the escapes, get the flage out, and make sure we do have a threat. Also, I think time in the round was called as well. So active player could be on turn zero there's the flage let's do another reset of the life helix bam yeah so it is it was time and round so this is currently turn zero so now this is like a basically a two turn clock if nothing else gets in the way and we have the one ring that we can start drawing cards off of Attempt to cast the Gigantha. Let's draw some cards in response. Oh, 
All right, so we do start to get some stuff, but we, hey, we learned. Remember, we talked about it. We finally learned how to play Subtlety right. This is a great card to be able to hit with Subtlety because it's a five drop, right? Something that is going to be really difficult for them to cast. So we say you may put this on the top or the bottom of your library. Your opponent does get to pick with that, and they say, well, I that's not going to help me win the game drawing that next turn, so let's put it on the on the bottom. And they're left with one card in hand. This is, of course, turn one. And there are five turns. Uh, both players kind of going back and forth, essentially get three turns each in Magic. Of course, other games have their own way of doing things. But all right, we've got a lot of reaction stuff. There's our drawing two. Another land here. Swing for nine and have a lot of reaction. Yeah, so it swings for nine because the three damage for the helix off of the attack trigger and then six for no blocks there. Yeah, lots of ways to kind of react and respond. There's a Phoenix. Like, do we try to set ourselves up? There's of course a Phoenix in the graveyard. What's the other card? Basically, the Cascade player has two turns. So they're in this. All right. Cast the Phoenix. That's the scary part when you're fighting against a control player and they have seven cards in hand. Or six cards, however many we're at now. Six. Maybe seven. All right. Phoenix into Phoenix, which will be hit with a discharge response. Just kind of help make sure that's a little bit smaller, weaker. Here's a 2-2. Two -two, that's fine. Ooh, a Mage Bane Lizard. Again, the uh, shredding of damage for each spell that you're going to be trying to cast, which will be met with a Spell Snare countering something that costs two or less. Great card specifically against this deck because of the amount of two drops that it runs. Like We're thinking of like Amp Raptor, Blood Braid Marauder, things like that. Like Even the, the Cash Grab, the uh, Malevolent Rumble, you can use the Spell Snares for those cards too. Those are actually very reasonable cards to hit with this card. All right, turn three. Take two damage off the one ring, but we're in this kind of wrap-up mode where we can just kind of move to combat. Here's three damage targeting you. And there's the handshake. The Just Guy Control player able to grab the victory there. At the end, we're able to kind of draw the game out very long. And, and that's kind of the the difficulty of the Cascade, of just being like not able to hit those Cascades and having to go for the let's sur basically suspend all my crashing footfalls in the early to kind of drag that last game out there and allowing the Control player to set themselves up better. But really good game there thanks so much for everybody tuning and watching remember we got of course more games on thursday and a special video coming out on saturday but thanks so much for tuning and watching and i'll see you all next game